Hi, boys and girls. Good morning. And welcome to our children's time together. I'm happy as always to have Mr. Robert with me. And if you don't know me yet, I'm Rob and I'm your Sunday school teacher. So thank you for being here and joining us this morning. I wanna gather us together by saying the Lord's Prayer. So hopefully you've got someone there with you who knows it and can help you along. And it's something that we'll work on learning together as the year goes along. So you can get comfortable, close your eyes, clasp your hands, bow your head, whatever works best for you as we say together, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, Robert, I've got a question for you. Hmm. Have you ever worked as part of a team? I have. The choir team upstairs here. Yeah, absolutely. How about you? Any teams? Yeah, so like you, I'm an avid curler. Curling is that funny sport when you're on the ice and you're throwing rocks down the sheet of ice. And I've been doing that for a number of years, and it's a lot of fun. I, I wonder, Robert, what good teamwork in a choir looks like. You know, in a choir, it's everyone is singing together using their individual voices to make beautiful music all together. Yeah. How about on a curling team? Well, that's a great question because there are different positions on a curling team. You've got the team captain or skip who's at one end of the ice saying what shot they want, what, to, what they want you to throw down the ice. You've got the person who's actually delivering the stone. And then you've got two people who use this funny thing that we call a broom, although it doesn't really look much like a broom uh, anymore. And they sweep the ice in front of the rock and help control the speed of the rock. So Robert, why is, why is teamwork in a choir important? Well, it, it helps us sing the music more beautifully. Yeah. If everyone's cooperating, we get a better result. Absolutely. And I imagine the same kind of thing happens on the ice. Yeah, on a curling team, all four members of the team have to work together and they have to communicate with each other what's happening so that we can make the best shot for the game possible. Absolutely. Yeah. But what happens when there's some conflict on your choir team? Well, we get distracted and the, and the end product isn't as good as it could be. Yeah, it's the same on a curling team. If we're not working together well, then we don't make the shot that we want to make and then we might not get the points we want to get for that particular round. Makes sense. So when something like that happens, how do you resolve a conflict? We communicate with each other, but more importantly, we listen to each other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's really important to share what went wrong and to try and listen and learn from that, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, right. Well, it's funny you mention all of that because our story for this morning is about Jesus telling his disciples what happens when, when there's conflict with his friends. Someone came up to him and said, what should we do when, when our friends aren't listening and working together well? And Jesus suggested that the first thing they should do is talk to one another. If two people are having a disagreement, they should talk to one another and see if they can learn how to, to repair the disagreement. And if that doesn't work, then maybe they go find someone else to help them what we call mediate the argument or to help bring a new perspective. That could be someone like a parent or an older brother or sister or a teacher if it was you and a friend. But we all need to try and do our best to work together as much as possible. And that's true for the church as well. You know, the church is a, is a building where we gather together on Sunday mornings and other times during the week. But the church is also all the people who are in the building and around the world. And the church is a little bit like a body, like a, a human body. You know, one of us is like a finger, another one of us is like a thumb, one person is like a hand or an arm or a shoulder. We all bring something different to the body that is the church. But we can't do everything on our own. We need to learn how to work together to make sure that we're doing everything we can for the greater good 
of everyone. And sometimes when one member of the body gets hurt, like if I hurt my finger, it's not just the finger that hurts, but all of me is aware of my hurt finger. And that's like the church too. It's like all the people in the church. When one of our members is hurting, we all feel that pain in some way. And we really need to do what we can to help them. Now, if, it's, if they're hurt because something has happened to them, then we really need to listen to what is hurting them and learn how to take care of them so that we can all be healthier together. You know, sometimes we do this really well, and sometimes we don't do it as well as we'd like. Sometimes we put our own wants and needs before the needs of others. And that's not to say that we, we shouldn't do the things that are necessary for us to be happy and healthy, but we need to also consider if what we want all the time, if that harms someone else, because if it does, then the body isn't working well together. We need to make sure that our wants and our needs don't hurt someone else as well. Jesus says that it is essential that we all work together so that our body, our church, is always at unity with itself. And when we fight and argue with one another, we're distracted from the real work, which is to show everyone God's love and God's justice by caring for one another and defending the people who have been oppressed and creating a world where everyone can grow and flourish and be the best person they can be. Now, I've got a picture for you here. Jesus says that when we come together and pray in his name, whenever two of us or three of us or more are gathered, Jesus is there with us. And whatever we ask as a group in Jesus' name, we can make happen because where two or three are gathered together, there Jesus is among us. And when we do things with Jesus and with God at the center, then we know we're looking out for everyone and not just ourselves. Amen. Now, Robert, I wonder if you might have a song that tells us what it's like when Jesus is here among us. I do have a song. It's called I'm With You. Wow! That's, that sounds like a perfect song. Right? Yeah. Here we go. It goes a little something like this. And you've got the music for it at home. It's like we knew the song was going to happen. <laughs> Jesus said I'm with you. You're never alone. You're never alone. Jesus said, I'm with you, you're never alone, my friend. One more time. Jesus said, I'm with you, you're never alone, you're never alone. Jesus said, I'm with you, you're never alone, my friend. Well, thank you, Robert. You're it's welcome. always nice to remember that whenever we pray, we know that Jesus is with us. So with that in mind, I'm going to say a final prayer for us as we wrap up our children's time today. So get yourself comfortable. You can bow your head, close your eyes, whatever is good for you. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for making us all one community as the body of Christ. Help us work together well, serve one another with love, and heal when there are conflicts between us. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Amen. Well, boys and girls, thank you for joining us this morning. I hope to see you soon. Whatever the rest of your Sunday looks like, I hope it's a great day. Please stay safe, please stay healthy, and God bless. Bye. Bye.